Tatiana is best girl. Hey everyone, welcome to Prince the Gate. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with episode 14? <laughs> I, sometimes I forget like the exact which number we're on. 14, yeah. Of Undead Unluck. And last time we got like basically the Tatiana episode. We got all the back background info on her. We got um, her just being awesome and, you know, brave and wonderful and just, she's amazing. <laughs> Um, I, I, I want to say as well, real quick, um, sorry if I seem maybe a little out of it or a little, like, l less enthusiastic than I might otherwise be. It's nothing to do with this or anything with the channel, even. It's just something out how, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> something else happened in real life that's just irritating me right now. Um... It's nothing to worry about. It's nothing like terrible or anything. Everyone's okay. It's not nothing. It's nothing like that. It's just an irritant. And because of that, I, I, I might be a little salty, I guess, for lack of a better word, while, uh, while reacting to this. And, and it, again, it's, I'm not going to take it out on the show. I'm going to be as, Fair and partial is a fair and impartial as I always try to be, and hopefully I still end up enjoying because I'm still really excited. It's just this kind of hit me out of nowhere. It just kind of came out of nowhere, and it's just it's gotten my mood a, a bit down. So I apologize. I wanted to I wanted to let you guys know that just. To make sure you understood if I seemed, again, less enthusiastic. It doesn't mean I'm not. It, it doesn't mean that I'm not excited for this. I very much am. It's just... I'm just irritated because of other things. Um, this might be the end of the arc. I don't know. It's hard to say if we're going to actually beat these guys this time. I feel like there's possibly another episode or two. It's hard to say. But I'm definitely interested to see how this goes. So let's just get this going and hope for the best. Cutting in here real quick to remind you of all the awesome content we have on the channel. Between Monday and Friday, we have a plethora of awesome series reactions with two on Wednesday. We have movie reactions every Saturday and Sunday. I do pre-record them during the week, but upload them on the weekend. And we have gaming content over on the Princess of Gaming channel. We have Baldur's Gate 3 every single day, Horizon Forbidden West every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, Beyond Two Souls on Wednesdays and Sundays, and Poppy Playtime every Saturday. And don't forget to click that link in the description to follow it to today's reaction. I do redirect everything on the channel just due to copyright. And on top of that, don't forget to click the subscribe button to subscribe to the channel, and the like button to help support. Uh, it means a lot, and I thank you so much for tuning in. That being said, let's get to today's reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, he's a kid? Is this some, like, element about his power that we don't know? Because his power is unrepair. And, uh, Tatla, or whatever her name is, she said, like, she told, um, uh, Fuko that he wasn't dead and that she would have to ask him and stuff about, like, who they are and all. So, like, as part of his power, his power, anything he cuts... Stops healing until he dies, right? Anything that he does damage to cannot heal until he dies. Or anyone. And... Is, is there like a secret second part of his ability? To where it's like whenever he dies he like comes back to life?
But like, why is he a kid? There's so many questions with this, and I'm sure it'll get answered. I'm sure we'll be told. But, because like, even if we want to believe like, oh, maybe he starts life again at the beginning. It's only been a week since that incident it mentions. Why is he a kid? Why would he be a kid? Unless he ages really fast back up to where he was when he died? I don't, I don't fucking know. I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to think of different ways this could work. I, in, unless someone has an ability that helps him with that. I don't know. I don't know. But the point is, he's back. He's confronting them while they're waiting for Chikara. Why? That, that's both concerning and just also, like, question, I'm questioning it. Because it's like, I don't, I, I weirdly don't feel like he's going to attack them here. But why is he approaching them about this? His last words prior to what appeared to be his death, and based on how his power works, had to have been his death. His last words were, so there's like people out, there's people out there like that. Which means he was surprised at Andy and Fugo's and their, their entire plan and everything. He was surprised at that. He was like, maybe even a little impressed by it. But it's like, what does this mean? Now, all we know about them is that they're negator hunters, that they seem to have it out against people, rather than, like, as I've stated in the past episodes, rather than them having it against God, <laughs> like uh, the round table do. But there's got to be more to, I guess, his character and story and everything that's got to be revealed soon. Because I feel like we're missing, like, core information that would make this all make sense right now. Now, this this episode, like, we also see that they, with them giving Chikara a week to think about this, to determine if he wants to just kind of live a normal life or go back to join the round table and everything... We don't actually get that answer in this episode yet, so it's still kind of left uns unsure, unclear if he's going to. I And I honestly don't know. Because it's, it's showing some clips of him interacting with the other students, and now that the language barrier issue is, is dealt with, it seems like it's... Uh, like it's going really well for him, and I'm wondering if he's going to be willing to give that up. But they need an 11th seat member. Unless it becomes unrepair. That would be fucking weird. They're not going to have him join the round table, are they? I don't even know anymore. Honestly, I don't even know anymore. And if he just does join them, why? I feel like he wouldn't want to join. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, I, I'm so thrown off by this. Um, the end to this battle was pretty good, though. I really like kind of where it went and how they ended up winning. But I, I, I noticed something interesting, I guess you could say. And, and, and a lot of people probably would be a lot more either disappointed or upset about it than I am. But I'm just more like... They did that for a reason. If you notice, after the opening, after the cold open scene and then the opening, there was a narrated recap. And then there was another one later in the episode. They don't normally do that, right? Right? Why was there two narrated recap moments in this episode? I think it's because they wanted to make sure 
They ended the episode right at that moment, right when Rip appears. They wanted to make sure that the episode ended right there and they had to extend things a little bit. I feel there's better ways they could have done so than adding in those random re narrated recaps. But that very much feels like the reason they would have done that. In which case, I feel like they really wanted to save for whatever is about to happen. They really wanted to save that for next episode. And that really has me interested. What is he about to say slash do slash whatever? What's about to happen here? That we would need to have that cliffhanger hit right there. Or is it just because that would be a good cliffhanger? Maybe they just did it because, oh, they thought that would be a great place for an episode to end, you know? For all we know, it could just be that. It could be that simple. <laughs> Um, but still, like, extending the episode with narrated recaps, there's better ways to do that. There's much better ways to extend an episode. Just extend some of the action. Or extend some of the dialogue. It wouldn't be that difficult to do. I feel like that would have been better. Um... But, like, other people might complain about it more. It didn't, like, bother me that much. It didn't take away from the other stuff that happened. But I'm definitely thinking we are going to get the next, uh... The new opening next episode. This feels like the end of the arc and sliding into the beginning of the next one, right at the end. I think that, uh, that it's the right time. Because... They definitely wanted to wait till the end of this arc because the opening does feature Chikara as well as uh, Tatla and uh, uh, Rip. So they wanted to wait till the end of this, which is, uh, it makes it uneven. It makes it so that there's more episodes with opening one than there are with opening two. But it's not that big of a deal. I feel like sometimes it does make more sense to have it um, split up according to arc rather than episode count. Just in terms of what works. Because so many shows have like switched to a new opening in the middle of an arc. And it's like really wild when they do that. Uh, because it kind of like just doesn't really make as much sense. And some shows make it work like One Piece where it's like, oh... This portion of the arc goes with this opening. Then this portion of the arc is like focusing on different things. So it gets a new opening for that. It, like with Wano. Wano had like what? Four openings? <laughs> um, and it made sense there. Because each portion of the arc was separated into acts. And they each had their own separate vibe to them. To where it's like the new openings for each one made sense. But... Then you have something like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, where in part five, they switched the opening at a really nonsensical point. And it just did not work. And, and it's like, it's, it's just kind of a crapshoot. But I think this is going to make more sense here. Because this, it feels like the, again, the end of an arc. And just really smoothly sliding into the next one. I think this is the best point where you could have the new opening start rather than having it be like split up by episode count. So yeah, I'm all good with that. I'm definitely interested to see what it's like. It's probably not going to be another Queen Bee song in terms of the music, which sucks because of how much I fucking love Queen Bee. But I'm hoping it's still good nonetheless, whether um, it's a group or, or artist I know or not. I'm hoping that it still keeps the vibe that we've established with this show and with the first opening and doesn't abandon that. Because I've seen shows do that. Oh, the first opening's amazing. It has this amazing vibe set to it that really matches the show in both the visuals and the music. But then the second, second opening is like, oh, generic ass anime opening. You know, forget trying to set the vibe properly. Forget trying to match the show. We're just going to give you the most generic-ass anime opening possible. 
And it really sucks when shit like that happens, so I really hope that's not the case here. I've seen so many animes with banger uh, first openings that just completely miss the ball with their second one. Completely, just absolutely fuck it up. And it's just, it sucks so much. And then there's ones where it's like the second opening is just so actively not as good, even if it still fits the vibe. It's just so actively not as good. It's just disappointing. Like Dororo's openings. Dororo's first opening is one of the best anime openings, period. Its second opening, it's just nowhere near as good. Same with Soul Eater. And I know a lot of people disagree with that. I know a lot of people really love Paper Moon, the second opening. But it's just the first Soul Eater opening is practically perfection. And the second one is is very generic to me. It's very boring. Um, but hopefully this ends up being a, a, another one, a, another really good opening. We'll see. But I'm definitely interested in where the story is going to go from here. I wonder if we're going to get higher stakes and more interesting powers. And which of these two is going to be our 11th seat? How is this going to go? I don't know at this point, but I'm definitely curious to find out. Obviously, do not spoil me. I want to remain as spoiler-free as possible, so don't tell me anything about what's going to happen. But for now, tell me your thoughts on this episode and just this arc we've had in general down in the comments below. And thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.